Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I paused because I, I don't think it was connected. If you're here with me, somebody say God is good one more time. I think it was buffering. So I went to investigate the problem. Yes. Yes. Good. All right. God is good. I see you, Christopher. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. Lord, as we've gathered in this space and at this time, I ask that your will be done, that our hearts be in sync, that peace and patience be my portion. Lord, that you would give me a steady pace, that you would make my feet like Heinz feet, that I might be stable to communicate what it is that you've given me. Lord, I present to you my, my study, I present to you my interpretations, and I ask that you have your way in and through me. Lord, I don't ask necessarily that you give me the ability to speak, but that you go beyond me and speak a word yourself. Lord, let the same message go forward and be heard uniquely 50 different ways to impact 50 different lives at the very least. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you and we trust you. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We often say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, but seldom do we go to the actual scripture. How are we looking? I feel like I'm too low. If I ever, if you ever cannot hear me, just let me know. I'm gonna cover these up for a minute so I can stay focused. Let's do this. We're gonna start with Psalms 118, but we're gonna be in Matthew chapter two. Praise to the God to God for his everlasting mercy. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel say now, his mercy endures forever. The Bible would say that it's by his mercies that we're not consumed. Let the house of Aaron say now, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say his mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Lord than to put confidence in princes. Government in shambles, but I never trusted the government to have it together in the first place. I trusted God. So when the government gets a bit chaotic, I just go to God. So I'm not just protesting in the streets, but I'm protesting in my prayer. All nations surround me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surround me. Yes, they surround me. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. God is our helper. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I'm not just repeating myself. It's actually repeated. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's faith. When everything looks like it's falling apart, for you to dare to believe that it's all coming together, for you to dare to believe that 2024 is going to be the best year that you've ever experienced, we're still in January. It takes faith to say something like that. I will live. I shall not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely. 
The Bible would tell us that whom the Lord loves, he chastens. The Lord has chastened me severely. God is always chastening us, developing us to go higher. We get mad at the process, not understanding that if we aren't willing to endure the process, we can never survive in the place called promise, in the place of purpose. If I could actually dive deeper, I don't want to get too far ahead of my notes, but if we forsake the process, we forsake the ultimate promise, which is eternal life with God, because this process called life in this journey that we're all on is a journey of perfecting, of chiseling, of, of, of correcting, pruning, purling us out to get back to being who we were in the beginning, which was Christ or with Christ, if that makes more sense to you. But we were never separate from him to have to say with him or without him. We were just him. And so this thing that we call life and time is only God's grace to get us back to being what we were in the beginning. <laughs> So if you reject the process, you forfeit the promise because you and I aren't going to be reunited with the Father. Christ is going to be reunited with the Father. So there will be no identity of I'm Robin and you're Jane and that's Joe. It's going to be we're all just Christ. And as Christ has come and consumed us, so we shall be presented back to our Father in heaven as Christ. I'll leave that alone. I shall not die but live. Doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. I believe that I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. That's the beauty right there. That despite God's correction, I'm not tall enough for that. I need my feet to touch the floor without shoes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That despite God's correction, that despite the process that we have to go through and whatever that process may look like. We're not dead. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Get excited when you're rejected. It's just a sign that God has greater purpose for you. I was happy that me and none of my exes made it. Someone told me one day, they said, I don't think God is going to connect you to your spouse because they would align with this level. God is taking you so high that you're going to have to wait to meet the person that aligns with that level. <laughs> the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Obviously, this was prophecy to Christ. In fact, this goes with our mandate for the year. First Peter chapter two, I do believe. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Bible would tell us that God does not give his spirit in measure, but whom the Lord sends speaks the word of God. Somebody say, I've been sent. I've been sent. I've been sent. If you can hear me, let's check in. If you're with me thus far, somebody say, I've been sent. I've been sent. I've been sent. I've been sent. I'm not just here aimlessly. I'm not just here randomly, but I've been sent here. I'm on assignment. Uh, that sounds good. Somebody say, I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. David would also say, I would have fainted had I not believed that I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I have an assignment. I have an assignment. I have an assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My knowing that I have an assignment is what gets me out of the bed when I want to stay in it. Not necessarily feeling 100%, but I have an assignment. So even when I don't feel my best, I've got to show up and give it my best or at least try because I have an assignment. And I understand that my assignment isn't just about me. It's not selfish, but I have a selfless assignment that requires that I show up with a care for the people connected to me. You have an assignment that requires that you put your feelings aside and your emotions aside, even your own perspectives and perceptions of situations aside, that you can come into alignment with God's purpose because sometimes God's purpose is unbeknownst to us. 
I can feel myself getting ahead of my notes and I'll work too hard on them to do that. <laughs> blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. Mm, that's Bible. That's Bible. It's Jesus God. And every time they refer to Jesus, they say, Lord, the Bible would even say that you cannot say Jesus is Lord unless you've been saved. So I guess Jesus is God because verse 27 says God is the Lord. <laughs> okay. And he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is the mercy of God that has kept us to the point of being in this place and at this time today. Greatness is all about the details, if I can be honest with you. So in my perfectionist uh, nature. I don't like being so low on the screen, so we're just going to have to pick our battles, and the battle I'm picking is my feet dangling for a little bit, okay, because I don't like being that low. But it is God's mercy that has kept all of us. We can take it as big as our own personal situations and circumstances, maybe the mistakes that we've made, maybe uh, they weren't necessarily mistakes. Maybe they were intentional, but our intentional decisions weren't just, you know, just weren't that good. Or we can go to something like pandemics and wars around the globe. We can go to, uh, what is that word? We can go to the economy being in a muck and, and prices being inflation. That's the word that I'm looking for. Yet all of us are being kept by God's mercy. God's grace is like a platform shoe that lifts us up. His mercy is what keeps us from falling down. His mercy keeps us. His loving kindness, his faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Let's pause before we get too far ahead and let's go to the text that we're going to be in for today. We're going to be in Matthew chapter two. <laughs> let's just read. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and I've come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. You have to watch out who you elect as a leader because if you elect a terrible leader, you will have a terrible people that follows him. And so when the leader that has been elected makes a terrible decision, <laughs> the entire community makes a terrible decision. I talked about last Wednesday, how in business they say things like a fish rots from the head uh, to highlight the fact that if leadership is corrupt at the head, if the head leader is corrupt, then everything that falls will be corrupt also. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you... Bethlehem and the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and mirth. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country 
another way. If you can hear me, somebody say, I'm going another way, I'm going another way, I'm going another way, I'm going another way, if you can hear me. I'm going another way. What's the other way? It's the road less traveled, if you can hear me. Okay, let's try this. Somebody say, another way, if you can hear me. Y'all know I have abandonment issues. So please, don't make my anxiety spike. Somebody say, another way, if you can hear me. If that's not going to work, <laughs> somebody say, God, make a way. And if that doesn't work, then we're just going to have to start speaking in tongues and rebuking the devil. Because there's a strategy of Satan coming up against us. God, make a way. There we go. All right. I have to check the filters later. Good to know that you're here. <laughs> We're here. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Pay attention to the language. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. You got to watch what you share with certain people. Some people are looking for a breadcrumb of information to strike, and you might be the only thing holding them back. You got to watch what you say when you're walking in seasons of, seasons of expansion. You have to watch the details that you give away when you're walking in seasons of expansion. You've got to be careful. You've got to guard your tongue with all diligence in seasons of expansion. You have to be precise walking in precision. You have to be careful. You have to be intentional because there is someone lurking for a crumb of destruction. Then was fulfilled. Listen to the text, Matthew chapter 2. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. Then was fulfilled. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah. Jeremiah is not in the New Testament. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament. So then in the New Testament was fulfilled what began in the Old Testament. Saying a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. We're almost done. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Archelaus, was reigning over Judea instead of his father, Herod. He was afraid to go there, and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Somebody say, God is intentional. God is intentional. If there's one thing that we have to be certain of in 2024, it is the intentionality of God. 2024 is not a year to walk out questioning and wondering God's character. Now, I can question and wonder about how certain things are going to play out. I dare you not to question and wonder about your vision and what God has commissioned you to do, but I'd rather you wonder about anything pertaining to yourself than wonder about the things of God and his character because God is intentional. God is faithful. Lamentations, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him God is faithful. God is consistent. God is solid. 
God does not shift or change like we do as humans. God does not ever have a bad day, which is why the hardest thing for people who are stepping out of sin into salvation is realizing that no matter how many times you mess up, trip, stumble, and fall backwards, God is still only thinking about your forwards because God never sees you in your lack. God only sees you in your abundance. When God looks at you, God never looks at you from a perspective of failure. God is always identifying you by his success, by what he's purposed you to do in this world, by what he's created you for, by what he's placed down on the inside of you that only you can release. Every time God looks at you, he's smiling at you. I know we would rather accept the fact that God is mad at us or upset with us or angry with us. When the Bible says that whom the Lord loves, he's, he chastens, it's not saying that God punishes us or gets retaliation on us. It is saying instead that God intentionally, as a parent disciplines their child that they might become better, God intentionally puts us into a training program that we can only identify as discipline where he is pruning us. I don't want you speaking like that to people. I don't want you treating people that way. I don't want you looking at the world that way. I don't want you judging people anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. The most anointed people have to go through seasons of separation from what we consider to be saints, to be put into a place where they can understand that Jesus goes far beyond our simple understanding as so-called Christians. How could you ever think that God would be so simple? Now, there are all these different conversations in this day and age. I mean, we have people like Little Nas X blaspheming the Lord Jesus. So we know this is nothing new. It's just becoming more prominent and more bold as we're in the last days. So all conversations are not accurate or valid. I say always be careful when you go outside the Bible. Let the Bible be your ceiling and let the Bible be your floor. I mean, some things might make sense, but the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. So it may make sense in my, my mind, but isn't that what led to our fall in Genesis? Was what we considered to make sense, we put over what God has already made out to make sense? So anytime I have to step out of the Bible to try to understand, explain, or mm, conversate about God, converse, talk about God, I've stepped into the mud. We are in a generation where faith is more commonly talked about. Back in the day, you know, people just went to church and they trusted whatever their pastor said or whatever their spiritual leader said, and they were all over it like white on rice or brown on rice, you know. Nowadays, we have everyone on TikTok talking about their own thoughts, ideologies. We are blessed to have some people that study the Bible and come directly out of the Bible. But even on main stages, even in our news outlets, there are so many conversations about God that true believers are being shifted from their faith because it's coming away from the Bible. God is solid. He does not shift or change. He is simple, yet highly complex. I've said before that there are different religions in the world, but if we believe in one God, the creator of everything, there must be some understanding that all of these religions somehow, some way, point back to Christ. I'll leave that on the floor for another day. So when you're authentically anointed, because God doesn't want you operating in this simple religious ideology of who he is. God has to expose you to new environments. God has to expose you to new behavioral patterns. God has to expose you to new ways of thinking, new ways of being, new, <laughs> new conversations, just so that you don't try to box him in like everyone else. Somebody say, God, break me out the box. God, break me out the box. I don't want to be living in a box when I know you don't. God, I want you to break me out my box. Break me out of what I consider to be comfortable. Break me out of what I consider to be regular. Break me out of what I consider to be true. And Lord, expose me to your truth. 
Expose me to your truth that may stretch my current capacity to push me into my divine capacity. God, break me out my box. God is solid. God is a keeper. We rely on him because when there is no possible way, God will make one. We trust in him because when nothing makes sense and there is no clear path, he will be our clarity. God is faithful. If there is one thing that I want you to know in 2024, it's that God is holding you up. The first thing I told you when we transitioned into the new year was 2024 is already set up for your success. I hope you're following me because we're going to loop back into this at the end. 2024 is already set up for your success. All you need to do is walk this thing out, walk into it. Just, just keep on moving no matter what. Just keep on going forward. Just keep your eyes set on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One foot in front of the other. Moving forward no matter what would be your key. No matter what happens and no matter what you go through, the key to 2024 is just moving forward. God has already planned this year out. God has already worked this year out. This every year is going to be a testing of your faith. So you're obviously going to have to go through trial and tribulation. But we glory in every tribulation, knowing that everything we're going through is producing something that we're going to. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It's a familiar scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. If the audio is good, somebody say, God, I acknowledge you. God, I acknowledge you. If you've been, if I've been ignoring you, God, let this be the moment that I acknowledge you. I tripped and stumbled and fell into this live, but either way it goes, God, I'm here. So God, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. This word acknowledge in the Hebrew means full or thorough knowledge, discernment, recognition. Robin, why are we talking about Hebrew? Because the Old Testament originally, originally was written in the Hebrew language. Proverbs being Old Testament to look for the authentic definition of words without the translation into American language, into English language, we look into the Hebrew to discover what it actually means. Full or thorough knowledge, discernment, recognition, meaning you must always be conscious of God's presence in any and all situations you go through in life. And in doing this, he will always tell you where to go and what to do. Discernment recognition. I'm discerning God in every single situation and circumstance of my life. I am recognizing that I am never by myself. I might get lonely. We're humans. And so there are moments where we do get lonely. That's why in the Garden of Eden, though Adam had God and Adam had animals, he still felt unsatisfied. I can't find anyone to balance me out. God says, that's okay, I've got somebody for you. It's going to look just like you. So you may feel lonely if you have yet to find the extension of yourself, but you are never alone because despite Adam feeling lonely, he had God with him. He had animals around him. And I mean, we're connected right here. You must always be conscious of God's presence. This is what I call Christ consciousness. If you've been connected to me for a little while, you've probably heard me talk about Christ consciousness a little bit before. If you've gone to therobinboynton.com and you've gotten the ebook, joint the course, Christ consciousness, we'll be talking about it either later this week or next week. I haven't, I didn't unlock that module yet, but one of these, either this week or next week, I'm going to be unpacking even more what Christ consciousness is and how it is so essential to your expansion in 2024. And overall, we as believers have the upper hand when striving for success, but we always fall short because we Forget that Christ is with us always. It's called Christ consciousness, being constantly aware of the never-ending presence of God. I'll give you just a little bit of it. The challenge with Christ consciousness, though it is supposed to set us up for success, it's not that we get to failure, we just don't get to that success. Though it is aimed at keeping us free, Christ consciousness is believing firmly that all things happen in God, 
and with God. Knowing that every detail of our life is planned, plotted and schemed by God. Let's go to Matthew 2, 16 through 23. The chaos of Jesus being born and the domino effect of problems that arose were seemingly random. First of all, Mary randomly became pregnant, having never had sex with Joseph, which was to be her husband. And Joseph is over here like, okay, well, how did you have a baby if we didn't have sex and you're telling me you didn't have sex with anybody else? That's the only way for a child to be produced. So first of all, we've got this child that we didn't even ask for. Now we're only following the word of the Lord and birthing these, this child. And I've walked into this new dimension of problems that I probably wouldn't have ever had had I not had this child that I never asked for in the first place. All these problems that arose at Jesus' birth were seemingly random. If we think about it from their perspective, no one knew that God had that planned all along not Joseph, not Mary. They didn't even know the, the, anything about the child. They didn't know what was going on. So we can imagine how confused both of them must have been in that situation. There was no way in the world they believed they had stood right in the center of God's will at that time until the angel of the Lord was sent to give instruction. Yet when we look at verses 17 and 18 and verse 23, we see that God allowed all those things intentionally to, profit, to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. Verse 17. Well, let's go up. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, <clears throat> was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem. And in all its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men, then was fulfilled what, the, what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, great mourning. Moving forward, let's go down to 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Everything that was happening in Matthew chapter 2, though seemingly chaotic from their perspective, was all happening in alignment with God's will because God is intentional, meaning he does things on purpose. Somebody say, I have purpose. I have purpose. I have purpose. It's to remind us that God is working this thing out. That God is working on my behalf. That all things are working for my good, because I have purpose. God does not do things randomly. God would never leave to chance the finishing of something that he started. God never starts something that he hasn't already finished. He's intentional. Christ consciousness is challenging because it requires that we view even seemingly the most unpleasant circumstances and experience from the lens that God had this planned all along. The lost job, the failed talking stage, <laughs> the closed business, the loss of the platform, the bankruptcy, the job change, the health scare, the depression, the breakup, the betrayal, all of what we blame the enemy for, the things we consider to be interruptions in God's plan, are all counted in the divine will of God, and this is what we cannot seem to grasp. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. This is Matthew 1, 18 through 25. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you. Marry your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit." And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God, how could you have told me that all of this chaos would follow your instruction? 
Um, this is why God never tells us the entire story. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, when he's telling Joseph, the son of David, that Mary would bear a child, God does not include what's going to happen in Matthew chapter 2. <laughs> in fact, he leaves all of that information out. He does not include what happens even at the end of the story besides just saying he will save his people from their sins because God never wants you to walk forward completely blind. But he always leaves some of it hidden because if we all knew what we had to go through to get there, we probably would have said no. Maybe I'm the only one like this is real, literally. Maybe I'm the only one that when I look back over my life and I look at the prayers that I've prayed and I look at everything that I've asked God for, if I knew what I would have to go through to get that thing, no, I absolutely would not have prayed for it. No, I absolutely would not have agreed to it. I would have said, God, listen, you can just take me home right now because it's not happening for me. We ask God so many questions about our life that after so long, we begin to attack assassinate, and even question his character, as if Isaiah 45 and 7 does not say, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. So we're giving the devil all of this credit, all of this credit, all of this credit, as if he has that much authority, as if he has the ability to create and not manipulate as if he does not have to go to God to get permission to access us in any way, shape, or form. This is our challenge as Christians and believers overall. The challenge of believing God is intentional. It's challenging to believe that God is intentional because that would mean believing that everything is gonna be all right. They say misery loves company. Sometimes it's harder for us to believe God than to not believe them, simply because we just don't want to believe that everything is going to be okay. Oh, I hate. I cannot stand. I hate. The Bible says it's all right to hate. Y'all be saying hate is such a strong word. I know that's why I used it. I hate talking to people that want to go circles after circles after circles about what's wrong about what happened to them, about the trauma. Okay, that's great. I'll sit with you and I'll talk to you about it for a minute. But after so long, you just want to stay in that trauma. I've already done preached to you and told you that everything's happening for good. Baby, if you knew the Bible or you didn't know it. I've already let you know that it's working for your good. I already let you know that it's only building you. It's not breaking you. I already let you know that what you've gone through and what you've suffered for through is only building you and your leadership to help somebody else. Yet you'd rather keep on talking about the lesser than the greater. Because me focusing on the greater would require that I disconnect with the lesser. And sometimes I just don't want to do that. We have a hard time forgiving people the people who disappointed us, and the people who let us down as if we can't easily just act like it never happened and move forward. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. Well, I know, but it's also a lot harder for me to keep holding on to that hatred and holding on to that offense than it is for me to just say, you know what? God, I give it over to you. I'm letting it go and I'm moving on. We would rather be stuck in the lesser. I would rather be insane doing the same thing over and over again, expecting something random, miraculous, and different to happen than for me to decide to stop doing that thing. It is hard for us to believe that God is intentional because it will require that we believe that everything is going to be all right. And if I really believe that all things are working for my good, and if you really believe that everything is going to be all right, you don't have anything to complain about. <laughs> for our light afflictions, which are only but for a moment, are producing something far greater. So I'm not focusing on the lesser because I understand that I've got something greater. But then what are we going to talk about when we're having a night out? What are we going to talk about at brunch? I love those videos. I haven't seen much lately where it's like whoever mentions their ex first has to pay the bill and they're eating the food silently. Just silently because we don't have nothing to talk about. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 2, it doesn't look good for Mary, Joseph, or Jesus, the baby Jesus. But if we flip the page to Matthew chapter 3, we see that everything actually worked out all right. Mm, 
skipping down because the first part of chapter three is about John the Baptist. But when we get to verse 13, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. This is when Jesus gets baptized by John. And then a voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Chapter four is when he enters into the temptation in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And then finally he comes out and he's able to step into his ministry. So we can see right in chapter three, it gets good despite the bad of chapter two. But it only happens that way because we're reading the entire story. The entire timeline from Matthew chapter 2 to chapter 3, though for us it's a simple page flip or depending on your Bible, here's chapter 2, here's chapter 3. The timeline is really 25 to 28 years, which means then us seeing that everything is going to work for our good. And us seeing the good that comes out of the bad is not a page turn type of thing. It doesn't matter how many times you turn around, shout and dance. If God is not finished with you, it's not going to happen tomorrow. The Bible says all things work for good, and that's meant to encourage us. That's meant to build our faith. Faith not being something fickle and aimed at just tomorrow, but faith that lasts, that stands the tests of time. To believe that, you know what, one day it is going to make sense. And that day might not be tomorrow. The timeline from Matthew chapter 2 to chapter 3 is estimated to be 25 through 28 years. Jesus was 30 when he stepped into ministry, so it had to be. From when he was a baby to when he was being baptized, entered into temptation, turned water into wine, stepped into ministry. Which means then life isn't just a page turned into goodness, but life is a journey into the goodness of God. If you're with me. If you can hear me, somebody say, God, turn the page. God, turn the page. God, turn the page. I know he's saying that life is not a page turning type of situation. But God, I dare to believe that you can just turn the page on my life and I can see something better tomorrow than I've seen today. God, just turn the page for me. <laughs> life isn't just a page turn into goodness. It's a journey. There was 25 through 28 years of wondering if anyone would find you and kill you. This is the text. 25 to 28 years of Mary and Joseph wondering why all this chaos took place over a child. Like, yeah, God, I know you that it's, you, you said that he would save the people. God, I know that you spoke all these amazing things. But God, I'm still trying to figure out what's the point because they couldn't see the entire thing from Matthew chapter 1. Nor could they see it in Matthew chapter 2. Surely not even in Matthew chapter 3. So even their timeline was larger than Jesus' timeline. Because at this time, she only knew partly of Jesus' full identity. 25 to 28 years of waiting for all things to work for good. We can even talk about um, 15, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about 17 to 18 years of Jesus waiting for his moment to go from being in the background to stepping into the foreground. He was 12 years old when he was in the temple, left behind in Jerusalem. And it wasn't until 30 that he got to step out in the forefront that what he was practicing in private had the opportunity to become public. I hope you're practicing in the private for what God is about to elevate into the public. We talked about 2024 being the year of expansion. I hope you're ready for the expansion. The mandate was built on 1 Peter chapter 2, and it says to make sure that your life is together by the time that eyes get put on your life. Are you ready for it? I don't know if it's in the two modules that I released on therobinboynton.com, but somewhere on there is me talking about how I was never ready for my life to be expanded. I was never ready to step into the light. I didn't want it, and I shied away from it for a long time because I knew my life wasn't in order. But that's just like God, not to wait till you think you're ready, but to wait till he knows that you're ready. Because everyone wants expansion. But everyone's not willing to deal with what comes with that expansion. Everybody has something to say about people who are in the spotlight. When you're the black sheep of the family, simply, people are always going to have something to say about you. <laughs> it's fine when they do it, but when you do it, it's a problem. Absolutely, because that's the price of expansion. 
Everybody wants to make more money, but more money, more bills, more money, more taxes. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur till it's time to pay them taxes and to file your fee. Everybody wants expansion, but everyone's not willing to pay the price for it. Life is not an overnight process as it relates to our success or our salvation. Now, the saving of our souls happens instantly when we give our life to Christ, believing in our heart, confessing with our mouth, period. But the walking out of that salvation and the transformation of your mind, of your heart, of your soul, of you that has to take place to make you into a perfect, accurate image of God, that's not an overnight thing. So despite how you backslide, you're yet still the same you. I hope I can say that a little bit better. Despite, despite, despite how you backslide, despite what you go through, God never changes his mind about you because God understands what we seldom understand, which is that we're on a journey. People give their life to Christ and they want to get it right overnight. I have a video on my page that talks about how we fall into this perfectionism mentality. God didn't save us perfect, and now we've tripped and stumbled into believing that we've got to be perfect, as if all of this happens overnight, as if overnight we were going to go from being sinful and freaky and nasty into being saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost-filled. Baby, you can be Holy Ghost-filled, saved, and sanctified, but still have to work through your sin because salvation, as it relates to your character, as it relates to your language, as it relates to your personality— is a process. Success in business is a process. Everyone, as we scroll on social media, we're watching people uh, who are successful. We're looking up to all these people who are successful, not understanding that this didn't happen overnight. <laughs> Just because you got a million followers overnight does not mean that you started making a million dollars. It takes time. Nicki Minaj just released a song called Press Play. And she said in the song, why can't you be beyond, why can't you Beyonce? Basically, why can't I be Beyonce? Talking about Nicki Minaj. And she says, her mama wasn't a business owner. Her daddy wasn't a businessman. <laughs> so it took her a little bit of time. And truth be told, there's still some things she's trying to figure out. Mm. And it's not an overnight process. We hear all things work together for good. If it repeats, I'll skip over it because I'm ahead of my own notes. And we think that means it will all make sense tomorrow. Somebody say, God, give me patience. God, give me patience. God, give me patience if you're with me. Somebody say, God, give me patience. God, give me patience. God, give me just a little bit of patience. God, give me patience to endure my purpose. Yes. We hear all things work for good, and we think that it means it will all make sense tomorrow. We sing songs like Waymaker by Leland and think it means God will make a way overnight. But truth be told, sometimes there's 25 through 28 years in between confusion and clarity. We may very well spend 25 through 28 years asking God why all of what endured all of what we had to endure happened, not understanding that everything is happening intentionally. Sometimes why doesn't make sense until a few decades pass by. Now at 25, I understand why I had to lose so many friends to grow. 35, you might understand why your parents never showed up for you. It was because their parents never showed up for them. I encourage all young people to get that lesson soon so you can stop blaming your parents and start just trying to build yourself. Maybe at 45, you'll start to understand that people pleasing really gets you nowhere. I hear a lot of people say in their 40s, uh, well, actually, it was Beyonce, the last person that I heard it. She said, the 40s, I'm having the best time of my life. I don't care what people think about me. And I hear this from a lot of people, that once you hit 40s, something just changes when you're like, you know what, I'm going to live my life for me. Maybe at 40, you start to understand people pleasing really does get you nowhere but depressed. And you're either going to like me for me or we can part ways. There are some things only time reveals when you have enough story written to read the pages. That is what we're doing with the Bible right now. 
It makes sense to us. We can read chapter one and we can read chapter two and we can look at everything that happens and we can read about Jesus on the cross and the disciples and we can read about Peter uh, uh, rejecting Christ, betraying Christ. We, we can read all of these things and be okay with the reading because we have the whole story. I don't have to worry about how it ends. I've been watching all the Queen's Men lately on BET+. Plus. I forgot the show existed until I was on Amazon Prime and I saw it. And I finally caught up on season two, and now I'm caught up on season three. And the last episode came out like the, the 12th or the 10th or 11th, something like that. And I was mad that I caught up because now I want to know what happens on the next episode. So it was good when I was in season two. I didn't have to wait to find out what happened next. But now that I've caught up, I'm wondering, and I don't know. So we're reading the Bible, and because we can flip to the next chapter and figure out what happens, there's not that much suspense. But when we're walking out life, we're operating from places of suspense and fear and anxiety and worry and confusion. And faith sets us free from all of this stuff. But sometimes we don't tap into that faith to get the release, the freedom that we need. Sometimes we're just anxious because we forget that there has to be a story for it all to make sense. You've got to live it out. More has to be on the pages for you to read it and understand. So at 25, I've got 25 chapters to read back on. But if I'm still at chapter one, I can't possibly make sense out of anything. I, I, am I making sense? Is it good? That's what we're doing now. We're reading the pages of trauma that once were painful and confusing, but are now purposeful and clear. We read the Bible and notice everything but God's intricate process for development. Paul would say that all of us are groaning in our body, waiting to be clothed with our heavenly, heavenly, heavenly garments, our heavenly habitation. Because it's traumatic. It's sufferable. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. As of now, all of us are in Matthew chapter 2 in some way that is unique to each individual, seeing things dimly, foggy, and a bit unsure. All of us are driving forward, squinting our eyes, trying to see the road ahead. We know we're going to make it, but it's not until we're reading it from the destination that it will finally all be clear. I remember the first time I drove to Atlanta. Uh, I had my white Jeep at the time. In fact, when I had just got my Jeep, why do I get vehicles? <laughs> I don't know what it is about me getting a vehicle and taking a road trip, but I'm never doing it again. Driving to Dallas did it for me. It took me 23, 21 or 23 hours to do it. I set my trip thing to track it. Never will I ever in life do another road trip. I'm not doing it for fun. If that's fun to you, baby, you can count me out. I'll, I'll fly there. We can meet in the middle, okay? I'm not doing it. But when I had first got my white Jeep, I drove literally days later to Atlanta. I had to use my GPS. I was a bit confused. In fact, I don't think at the time, yeah, I think my first time, I didn't know too much about the daylight. So I ended up getting to Georgia. See me, I don't like driving in the dark, especially not through the mountains, because I, I just get a little bit of worry, a little bit worried, okay? And so I didn't know that you had to leave when it's dark here like at around 4 a.m. when it's still dark to get there and it still be light in the evening because it's like an eight, 10 hour drive or whatever the case may be. So when I finally did get to Georgia or when I got to like Tennessee, it was getting dark and I couldn't see. And mind you, my J last Jeep was a 2022. Okay, brand new straight off the lot. My white Jeep was a 2008. <laughs> it didn't have halogen lights. It had the old yellow lights. So I could barely see the road in front of me. It was no tech in the car, baby. It was, it was a little rough. It was still a Jeep, but it was a little rough. <laughs> and so I got there and I was a little scared. It started raining. Man, when I tell you it was pouring down raining, I can remember it so vivid, so clearly. It was pouring down rain and it was semi-trucks. And I'm not talking about no simple rain. I'm talking about pouring down rain to the point that I couldn't see. And I just kept on driving. And I'm over here trying to speed up because it's a semi-truck right here. And I'm like, all right now, something isn't right. And, and I'm trying to speed up. But in the old Jeeps, you your four-wheel drive limited your speed, right? You could only go like maybe 50 
if 60, but I think it was only like 50 miles an hour when your truck was in four wheel drive. So because I was going through the rain, the truck automatically kicked into four wheel drive and it's over here slowing me down. So I'm over here trying to speed up so I don't get crushed by the semi truck and the car is over here speeding me down. Then finally we got off the freeway and it was just chaotic. I'm gonna leave that on the floor. I'm gonna leave that on the floor. My point being on my way there, I was a bit confused. I was squinting, just trying to figure it out. I knew I was headed in the right direction because I had the GPS. God always lets us know the direction that we're going in and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll what? Direct your path. So I know I'm going in the right direction, but it's a little bit foggy. I didn't expect any rain. I didn't expect no mountains. It was my first time driving by myself. But when I finally did drive back once, it was easy. It was actually seemingly very quick. I didn't need GPS. I wasn't scared. I wasn't worried. And now, in fact, I think I ended up doing it one, two, three, four. So that I think twice, tw two trips back and forth. Now I could probably do it and it'd be gumdrops, candy canes, and rainbows. And the second time I did it, I knew exactly where my favorite gas station to stop was. I knew where my favorite grocery store to stop was because I had already gone through the thing and I was looking back over it. But I had to be willing to keep going while there wasn't enough of the story written to get to the place where it would be complete and it would all make sense. So now I'm not confused at why the drive is so scary at this time. I, I know to go earlier. I've got the details. Uh, if I'm making sense and if you're with me, somebody say, God, give me the details. 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 We're driving forward, squinting our eyes, trying to see the road ahead. And we're going to make it, but it's not until we're reading it from the destination that it will finally all be clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Millionaires in their 20s and 30s, I got ahead of my notes, but I want to tie this into there. Millionaires in their 20s and 30s, it still took time. We, I'm hitting on the point of how we watch people on social media, people who have attained success, and we judge our own situations, and we become insecure about our lives, our homes, communities, and financial status while we're yet still in Chapter 2, not knowing that by Chapter 10 you've closed multi-million dollar deals and you're worth at least $12 million. You're looking at people who have put all of this time and energy into the game and thinking that it's going to happen overnight for you. Now, I do know a God that works miracles, but I also know a God that believes in seasons and times. Everything happens for a reason and in God's intentional season, Ecclesiastes 3, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what has been planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. There's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and there's definitely a time to hate, saith the Bible a time of war and a time of peace. We only lose our faith when we place our hope in the wrong season and forget that God in his intentionality is developing us on purpose to get us to our specific destiny and a specific destination. This destiny and destination is heaven, the unending glory of God in all of our lives. Psalms 23, David will go on to say, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Despite money, despite success, despite any material thing that you pray and ask God for, despite goals, despite aspirations, the entire point of this thing called life as a believer, as a Christian, even as a life overall, is to perfect us into an accurate image of Christ that we have access into eternal life. Romans 6 and 23 will go on to say, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
We pray and ask God for a lot of things. But the gift, if God doesn't do anything else for us in life, now we are blessed to have all of these precious promises from God. We are blessed to have all of the, I desire above all things that you prosper and be in good health as your soul does prosper. We have all of these promises, but the main gift from God, the main thing God gives us is eternal life. Second Corinthians, Paul would say, for chapter four, verse 16 through 18, therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Going to Matthew chapter 2. Despite everything that they saw on the outside, Joseph was bold enough not to pay attention to what was going on around him and instead pay attention to what God was saying in him. The destruction aiming for their heads, the nomadic state of living, living the enemies and the uncertainty. Joseph found all the clarity that he needed and what he saw when he closed his eyes, not when they were open. We didn't cross over into 2024 and find a bag of money on the ground. If you did, call me. We're trying to get a church building here. If you found a million dollars laying on the floor, I would love for you to partner with me in bringing this vision to fruition, all right? I do know a God that answers prayers. Yes, Jesus, all right? But we didn't cross over into 2024 and just wake up to money in our bank accounts like that, all right? We're just walking this year of expansion out because of what God showed us when our eyes were closed. What we believed on the inside of us, that I just had this feeling that it was gonna be good for me. And I'm just walking out this feeling. When I moved to Atlanta the first, first, first time, since that's the story that we're on. Let me think. Well, the first, first, first time I moved back because I want to be with my ex. <laughs> that's real. But the second time that I moved, I got a job at Mercedes. <laughs> that was real. That was real. That was real. Oh, Jesus, thank you for progress and deliverance and growth. I got a job at Mercedes. And the job didn't start till maybe January or February, but I moved in like December and I just had this feeling to go. I didn't know too much. I didn't have anything much figured out. I just had this feeling to go. And I believed so much in what God has spoken to me on my dreams, if we can put it directly to Matthew chapter two, in my dreams, in my vision, and on the inside. I mean, now we have the Holy Spirit, so it doesn't have to just be dreams. It can just be, I have this sense or I have this feeling. And so me having the Holy Spirit, I had this sense and I had this feeling to just go. This was the voice of God telling them over and over again that everything will be all right, going to chapter two, Matthew. God will always send you a word that saves you. Your challenge is believing that word to receive its salvation. What would have happened had Joseph not believed the word the angel of the Lord has spoken? What would have happened if Joseph said, you know what, there's no way possible that we can escape Herod. There's no way possible that we're going to survive this. Why do you want me to go to Nazareth? There's no way possible that they won't get us in Nazareth. Nazareth. But because he believed what it was that God was speaking to him, despite the external situation or circumstance, because he didn't look at that which was seen because it was only temporary, but decided to close his eyes to what was visible naturally and open his ears to what was vis visual spiritually, he was able to get to the place called glory. They would have missed their moment. They would have lost their way. They would have given up. The difference between success and failure is faith. Even failure is success as long as you have the faith for it. Even what we consider to be missteps are perfect steps if you have the faith for it. If you are believing that everything is happening on purpose, everything is happening in alignment with God's will, if you are having a Christ contexted perception, perspective, I taught about this before. If you are always keeping God at the forefront of everything that you do, acknowledging him in all your ways, discerning him in all your ways, recognizing him in all your ways, 
then you should know that what the enemy means for evil, God will still use for good. And yes, this is our year of expansion, but we're also being expanded in our faith, which means I've got to be broken in my old faith to be built up in my new faith. So we look at God as a master builder and we call ourselves master builders as the seed of him. Yet in breaking seasons, we start to question God's building, not understanding that every time you go to build something, something has to be broken. Builders who build houses, do they call themselves breakers? No, but they surely go and have to break up the ground before they start laying a foundation. Or maybe there's already a foundation built and they have to break that foundation down to build a new foundation up, but they don't call themselves breakers. They still call themselves builders. Because anytime you're building, there's still going to be an ounce of breaking. So when I want to go, pro when I want to grow professionally, I've got to be broken professionally. I started to learn how to, uh, to, to fix my resume up to be attracted by employers because I had to be broken professionally. I didn't get that interview. I didn't get that job offer. Well, why? Let me tweak a couple of things. So the breaking produced the building. Okay, how do I structure my conversations better? How do I treat people better? I had to be broken down. I had to be rejected. I had to be betrayed maybe to get something that was building me for the better in my faith. I had to come to find out that, you know, it don't matter if I pray for five hours or 30 minutes, God is still going to show up anyways because that's just what he does. I had to go through something that required my faith which raises a question, what are you believing despite what it is that you're seeing in your own particular life, in your own unique situation and circumstance? What are you believing despite what it is that you are seeing? Are you holding on to the word God has spoken in your life or are you allowing what you see in the natural to cancel out what God has shown you in the spiritual? Are you believing God in 2024 or are you yet doubting God? Are you going to have a faith that says, I trust in him? Or are you going to have a shaky and a wary faith? I was watching um, Medea's class reunion on BET Plus. I had to get the B, my I had to get my uh, BET Plus subscription to watch All the Queen's Men. I'm in my seven day free trial, so you know I'm gonna watch what I can watch while I wait for the next episode of All the Queen's Men, which I see I'm gonna have to pay for the subscription now because the whole series isn't up there. I was trying to kill it out while, while I was in my free trial, <laughs> and they were singing a song. I think it was a song moment, talking about how they know that God hears them. <laughs> No matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, they know that God hears them. Are you walking in 2024 with a knowing about God? Knowing that he's intentional? Knowing that he's purposeful? <laughs> knowing even that he's right on time. I was listening to On Time God. Was I playing that when I got on here? Something different was playing. I was listening to On Time God was when I was in my worship before this moment. I always worship before I get on these lives. Are you believing in God's character? If you're believing God in 2024, somebody say, God, I believe if you're with me. God, I believe. God, I believe. God, I believe if you're with me. Now, if you're without me, that's your business. But if you're with me, somebody say, God, I believe. Yeah, there you go. I see you. I see you. I see you. My last point. My last point is this. Despite the ups and downs in your life, all things are happening to fulfill the prophecy that's been spoken of you. Every single detail of your life is aimed at fulfilling prophecy. You were spoken of far before you got here. Matthew chapter two, I'm gonna read it from my screen so I can. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men was exceedingly angry and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Beth Bethlehem and in all his districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Prophecy 
then was fulfilled everything that happened. Herod was deceived by the wise men. He was angry. He put to death the male children who were in Bethlehem. But all of this seemingly chaos, seeming all of this, what seemed to be chaos, was actually God's purpose intentionally to fulfill what Jeremiah the prophet had spoken in the Old Testament. Verse 19. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Despite how it looked from the perspective of Mary, Joseph, and little baby Jesus, God as the author the director, and the producer of the film caused all things to work together for the fulfilling of each prophecy, and the prophecy was good. Your entire life has been prophesied before you got here. Prophesied, meaning spoken or declared before this current time. We ask questions like, God, how do I know that all of this is happening intentionally? How do I know that I'm walking in a prophecy? What makes me special? Nothing, beloved. The Bible says that God shows no partiality. So the same thing he said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations is the same thing that he's saying to you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations, meaning I put you here with purpose. So despite how it looks and despite the process of development that you have to go through, it is all happening to fulfill what has been predestined for your life. Romans 8 and 28, because you are foreknown and because God knew you prior to today, Romans 8 and 28 through 30 would tell us, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified, but whom he foreknew, he predestined. To be conformed to the image of his son. We'll come back to that. And for a little razzle-dazzle, Isaiah 46 and 10 says, Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You are not aimlessly living or living out an unwritten story. From your perspective and from our placement, it's unwritten because we still have to live it. Yet, Revelations already talks about the coming of Christ that has yet to happen, meaning somewhere it's already written how your story is going to go. You are walking out the prophecy spoken for your life that in the end God be glorified. Matthew chapter 2 speaks of chaos in a time of what would normally be celebration. Jesus is born. They bring him gold, frankincense, and mirth. Their Savior has been born. It's an exciting thing. It provokes people all around to want to celebrate. Mary and Joseph, even personally, just celebrating because they, just celebrating because they had a child. Yet in a moment that they considered to be celebration, it was actually a little bit chaotic. Yet that chaos was not outside of God's will. That chaos was not random from an, a God perspective. But all things happen intentionally. All things happen purposely. Everything was aimed to fulfill prophecy and develop them for where they were headed. God is intentionally developing you. Every day of your life, I say as believers, we have to always keep our foot forward in education, learning, growing, 
developing, expanding, reaching towards something. Every day of our life is a lesson to know God better, to know ourselves better, to know the functionality of the world a little bit better, to stop looking at things from the simple perspective of what's on the surface and to start looking deeper at what's beneath it every day. If I actually, that's why it's so important that we forgive people and so important that we disconnect from our trauma and heal and grow because we'll spend our entire life highlighting what went wrong instead of recognizing that in everything that went wrong, I've got a strategy for how to do something right. I think I talked about this Wednesday, that despite all of our scars, despite all of the pain, it yet has given us power to walk in our purpose that everybody does not have. <laughs> Everyone doesn't know how to make ends meet when the money's short. Everybody doesn't know how to survive when all things look like hell. Everyone doesn't know that God will heal you from your sickness because they've never been sick. Everybody doesn't know these things, but because we go through our own situation, circumstances, and have our own story to tell, we have a reason to be alive. So all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now you're able to stand with purpose because you endured a pain that somebody else wouldn't have. The pain in waiting for the business to take off. The pain in waiting for the business to boom. I've been talking about her lately. That's because for some reason she's all over my FYP and I don't even follow the lady. But shout out to you, Lachey Greenwood. I don't know why. I don't even have hair. I don't use her products. But shout out to her. I remember when she was a teacher. I loved her teacher videos. Like I literally remember scrolling when she was a teacher. I remember her talking about the anxiety of her leaving teaching to step into either full-time content creation or entrepreneurship. I think she was saying content creation at the time. I don't remember. The pain of having to walk away from something, not knowing what I'm really walking into. The pain of having to leave a relationship. Not knowing if I'll ever find a better one, but I just got faith to believe that I will. The pain of having to hold on to this little child that I didn't even ask for. I wrote in my book, I wrote, I, I never chose ministry. I think I talked about this Wednesday, maybe. I didn't choose it. <laughs> Marketing <laughs> and e-commerce is what I chose to do. It's what I spent years learning. It's what I spent thousands learning. E-commerce and marketing, tech. I didn't choose the thug life. The thug life chose me. Ministry chose me. <laughs> Everything that we're walking in, when you really tap into purpose, it's not something that you necessarily choose. It's something that chooses you. And when you finally get into that good cavity of purpose, you're going to have to go through pain, the pain of waiting. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Why would I need my strength to be renewed if it wasn't exhausting to just be waiting? Lord, I'm waiting for you to answer my prayer. I'm waiting for the breakthrough. Holding on to the baby I didn't ask for. Dodging all this chaos that came with the baby. I didn't ask for all of these problems, trials and tribulations that came with the purpose I didn't even ask for. But actually looking back, I did ask for it in my prayers, but it was already predestined. So no, I really didn't ask for it. <laughs> None of us did. So we got this baby, this little baby Jesus, this seed. The serpent will bruise your heel, but your seed will crush his head. And despite all of the chaos that you see, you've got to have faith to believe that God is good, to believe that God is faithful, to believe that God is intentional, to believe that God is not a God of, uh, uh, of what is it, um, 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 crisis management. There we go. He's not that type of God. He's not even a God of preventative measures. He's a God of predestination. The lamb was slain before the foundations of the world, meaning him telling Adam and Eve who they were and giving them their purpose and telling them what to do was not a preventative measure to stop them from the fall because he had already set up a predestined solution to the problem that had yet to arise in the first place because God is intentional. 
prophecy fulfilled is about you understanding that every single moment of your life is just fulfilling prophecy. So you can either reject the process and reject the prophecy, or you can be willing to go through the process of everything that 2024 is going to throw at you. The business skills that are going to be developed in you professionally, you're going to grow. You're going to expand. Psychologically, you're going to expand, but you can't expand if you're going to keep thinking the way that you thought before. Spiritually, you're going to expand, but you can't pray the way that you prayed before. You can't fast and study the way that you fasted and studied before. The mandate for the year was to desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby to get into this fresh posture with God. Not even get back into something, no, but go forward into something. Matthew chapter 2 speaks of chaos in a time of what would normally be celebration. This is our crossover into 2024. It's celebration, but sprinkles of chaos. Yet it's all working for our good by faith. Somebody say, my faith is stable. My faith is stable. My faith is stable. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Yeah, I'm not operating with a shaky faith, but my faith is absolutely stable. My faith is solid. Now, if you've got anything good from this message, somebody say God is good. Somebody say God is good. God is good. God is good. If this was good in any way, good. If you've got one thing from this message, drop the one thing that you got. Make it simple because you don't have much to type. But drop one thing that you got from this entire moment. It can be from the very, very, very beginning. It can be at the very, very, very end. I was looking for that one right there. Good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. Somebody said something about the 25 through 28 years. And I think that is so important for us to remember and focus on is there were many years in between these chapters before we got to see everything all good and gravy. <laughs> there was a lot of time in between. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to pray with you, and that is all I have for you on today. Many, many years, many, many years. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. So we're not in a rush to get anywhere. I've got goals, and I aim to accomplish them on time, in my timing. But there is also a God that is sovereign greater than us, the master, the controller, who has his own schedule for everything. And so there are some things that are going to happen in your timing, and there are other things that happen in God's timing. Your focus, your challenge is just making sure that you're ready by the time that you get there. You don't want to finally be offered the job and be scrambling to learn how to do the job because you weren't prepared before you got there. If this is what you're believing God for, you should be preparing for that thing. If you're believing God to put you in this place, this space, and this opportunity, you should be studying for that thing. Baby, I got books on church administration. I've got books on all these different type of things. I'm not there all the way yet, but I'm going to make sure that when I do get there, I'm ready for it. I'm going to make sure of that. By faith. I want to pray with you in this moment. I want to pray that God give you peace and patience in the process. This is your opportunity to sow into this moment, to sow into this message, to tithe if you're a tither into this ministry. If this is a ministry that you consider to be home for you, if this is a ministry that feeds you, builds you, grows you, and develops you, this is your time to tithe into the ministry if you haven't already. Shout out to the tithers, and this is your time to sow. If you are sowing, sow on a multiple of 14. Today is the 14th day of the month. And I'm believing that God is going to pour out fresh stability for you. 
14 is double seven, so it's double a, a measure of perfection, of completeness, of stability, of solidity. And I'm believing that on this Sunday, that God is going to put revival into our thought processes, that God is going to put revival into our heart posture, that God is going to put revival into our determination. God is going to put revival into our visions. God is going to put revival into our heart behind our vision. I believe that God is going to, on this 14th day of January, Give us revival in every area of our life and our passions and even as it relates to our purpose. If you are sowing, sow in a multiple of 14. 14, 28, 42, 56, 70, 112, 126, 140, so on. All that information is linked in my bio. Cash app is dollar sign the Robin Boynton. Venmo is at the Robin Boynton. If you want PayPal, it's still the Robin Boynton, but you can click the link in my bio to find all that information. When you sow, I want you to put on your heart what God has before we pray as we are preparing. I want you to put directly on your mind what you are believing God for. Something specific in the area of breakthrough. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your faith. Maybe it's a breakthrough to believe God on another level. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your health. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your finances. Maybe it's a breakthrough in your emotions or a breakthrough in your marriage or your relationship. I want you to get on your mind an area that you need to see breakthrough in. Maybe everything is going all right and you just want to walk into the breakthrough of expanding in this year. I want you to get that thing on your mind as we sow into this moment and as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Lord, we lift up our hands to you. We so we tithe, we give in this moment. Not that this triumphs over our faith, but that it extends our faith. This is our worship. You said that every person must give. You said give, give, give. What we have purpose to give in our heart. What we on the inside of us believe that you are deserving of and believe that you are worth. That it should align with our faith, that the expression of our hands should always match what we have going on in our heart. So, Lord, this is just an extension of what we already have going on on the inside of us. We lift it up to you now. Lord, we're sowing into our breakthroughs. We're sowing into our deliverance. We're sowing into our healing. We're sowing into our expansion. We're sowing into our increase. God, sometimes all we have is tears, and I'm thankful that you said that even if we sow in tears, we'll reap in joy. Someone only has seven and less than that, but I'm thankful that you honor the widow's might. I'm thankful that even if all we've got is time, that our time is yet still counted as seed in you, and we're in expectation for a harvest. God, we thank you for your word. Father, I pray that a fresh spirit of patience fall upon every single person connected to this anointing, every single person under the sound of my voice, that they will have patience to endure the process. Some of us are in our Matthew chapter 2, some are in our chapter 3, yet nevertheless, there is still a large amount of time in between them both because even if I'm in chapter 3, I'm still waiting to get to chapter 4 and there's still time and all of us are just waiting to get to the end. Oh God, keep us to get to the end. Lord, that as we walk out this thing called life, when we finally do face <laughs> death, it won't be our ending but our beginning. Lord, that you'll make everything wrong right, everything bad, you'll turn for good. God, really, you've already promised all these things, so we thank you for your precious promises. God, we thank you that you are yet still speaking to us always. We thank you that you are yet guiding us, yet guarding us, guaranteeing us, and even directing us. God, we thank you that you're covering us, keeping us. We thank you for your confidence that is falling on us afresh today, oh God. Lord, oh, we felt like giving up, but God, we thank you that you keep giving us the strength that we need to press in. Lord, we thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you for your power to pray and watch atmospheres change and watch situations and circumstances change. God, we thank you that you'll always send a word that leads us, directs us, and guides us. Father, I pray that you'll tune every here to hear you clearly. Lord, that there will be no doubt, there'll be no question, qualm, or query about your character in 2024, but that everyone's confession will firmly, consistently, and boldly be that, God, not only are you good, but you're intentional. God, we thank you that you do everything on purpose. 
We thank you that we're not waiting for anything to work itself out, but that all things have already been worked out and we're just waiting to see it come to fruition. God, I pray that you give us peace in the process, patience, patience, peace in the process, oh God, that we can wake up every day with a smile on our face, that we can really bless you at all times, that we can enter into your presence with thanksgiving, knowing that every single prayer request has been answered, though we're waiting on its arrival. Lord God, there's nobody in this world like you, Jesus. And so we love you and we thank you for being unique. Lord, we break out of perfectionism and we break out of shrinking and we step into ascension. We're stepping into rising high, high, high above everything that's trying to take us out. You didn't go low, though you went low. You went up high, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the building. We thank you that in every single moment of our life, you are yet still building us, whether it be spiritually, whether it be psychologically, whether it be professionally. God, we thank you that you're not finished with us yet. How boring would that be for you to be finished with us, oh God? Lord, we thank you that there is still more to go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we depart from this space in this place, I pray that you posture and position us for the tomorrow ahead. You told us not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have cares of its own, worries of its own, troubles of its own. Father, I pray for thought processes. I pray for brain processes, the functionality of the carnal brain, oh God, that you will mend together what's been torn apart. The supernatural healing will come to the brain of the believer, the mind of the believer. I come up against tumors, sickness, and disease. I bind and rebuke every strategy of Satan that my authority can come up against. And Lord, I ask that you rebuke the devourer for our sakes. You said not to worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have cares, worries, troubles, concerns of its own, but to just trust you in our today. So God, we stand here today trusting you. We stand here today acknowledging you. We stand here today thanking you. We stand here today on one accord, knowing that you're here because two and three have gathered. Lord, we come into agreement with the expectation of each other. Lord, have your way. Lord, we say yes to the pain that's producing purpose and the purpose that has a little bit of pain. We say yes to the prosperity that's on the other side of it. We say yes to the revealing of your glory. We say yes to your will and yes to your way. Yes to even your nose. God, we just say yes. Jesus, our confession is yes. You lead the way. Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, I plead your blood from the crown of every head connected to me to the very soles of their feet. A fresh hedge of protection be their portion, that no weapon formed against them prosper, and that every tongue that rises up against them be condemned. Lord, we thank you for your word, our sword and our defense against the enemy, and even the enemy. I'm reminded of David who encouraged himself in you when no one else was there to back him up. God, I pray that we have a shift in our focus in 2024, that your children stop trying to be everything to everybody and just focus on being everything to you. Lord, we just ask this and so many more blessings. Your word says, given it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. <laughs> shall man give unto our bosom. Ecclesiastes would tell us that the sinner has to go out and gather, but the righteous man just collects what's been gathered. So when you say that men shall give unto us, it means that you're going to lift the weight. It means you're going to make it easy. It means that we're not going to have to work hard for everything, but there are some things that you're just going to place into our hands. So I thank you for placement in this season, Jesus. I thank you that you're yet still opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings that we don't even have room enough to receive. God, give us blessings so big that we've got to go sit down with the banker and open up new accounts. God, give us blessings so big that we have to go seek after new guidance and seek after new wisdom, that we've got to start going to new places and new spaces. I can't drive in that neighborhood no more my car costs too much type of increase. God, we believe you to increase our faith. That when the devil comes and tries to take it away, we'll have so much on reserve that he will never succeed. Oh God, increase us, expand us on the inside and out. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It has been my pleasure. It has been my honor, as it is always, to sit with you, to stay with you, to talk with you, to teach you, and to learn with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I give you praise for your faithfulness. God, I thank you for your consistency. God, I thank you for your truthfulness. Even when the devil's a liar, God, I'm thankful that you're keeping us even now. God, I'm thankful that you keep us even when we don't know that we're being kept. God, I'm thankful that you're yet still making ways out of absolutely no ways. I'm thankful that you've hedged us behind and before. God, I'm thankful that you are our protection. I'm thankful that you are our rock when it gets weary. God, I'm thankful that you are our stability when things get unstable. God, I'm thankful that you are our peace and our strength and our shield. I'm thankful that you're our covering. God, I'm thankful that you're not only fighting for us, but God, you're also vindicating us. God, you're also standing behind us and silencing us. God, I'm thankful that you're on our sides and behind us, before us, above us, and beneath us. God, I'm thankful that you're all things and everything at the same time. Jehovah Shammah, God, we thank you that you're always here. Jehovah Sit Canoe, we thank you that you are yet continuing to pearl us into a perfect image of who you are. Oh God, we thank you for a spirit of precision that is falling on us even now, that tomorrow we will tackle <laughs> every trial and tribulation like it's nothing <laughs> but dust. <laughs> Oh, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hey, man, all right. We're done here. Um, 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 let's go here. If you want to sow into this ministry <laughs> and sow into this word, all of that information is linked in my bio. The Robin Boynton, everywhere. Cash at Venmo, PayPal. Um, you can explore those options linked in the bio. If you have not already went on therobinboynton.com and joined the Living in the Top 1% ebook course and community you're missing out i've released two modules already the first was obviously the introduction and then i released head versus heart 2024 is about you discerning the battle between your head and your heart are you experiencing a battle that's just aimed at your head or is the battle that you're experiencing already in your heart once it gets to your heart you have to tap into a different posture but as long as it's just in your head you can bob and weave through the stuff that's trying to bob and weave through you baby i've got strategy for you if you have not already connected with us there you're late and you're behind, but you have the opportunity to do that right now, right here today. You can go on therobinboynton.com and you can connect with us. You can join in with us. We will be doing our first private live, our first intimate live experience um, this Thursday. It'll only be on therobinboynton.com. It will not be on TikTok Live. I'm releasing content that is specific to the people that are connected to therobinboynton.com. Now, if you want content, the Robin Boynton Ministry content and everything the Robin Boynton content directly to your inbox. If you want practical, practical, practical strategy, practical tips, what is practical? It means you can apply it. Strategy directly to your inbox at least once a week. Join the mailing list. You can find that on therobinboynton.com also. You'll see information regarding the Living in the Top 1% e-book course, e course and community. But if you scroll down, you'll see join the The Robin Boynton newsletter. I encourage you to do that so we can connect all throughout the week and not just limit our interactions to here and to now. Yes, this will be reposted on YouTube. Christopher, it's good to see you. I love you. I love all of you. And I'm thankful for you guys continuously supporting me, praying for me, and backing me up. I firmly believe that I serve a great people and you make it worthwhile. And so I look forward to seeing all of you bloom. I receive that. Hallelujah. It's your church. Thank you for the building. Hallelujah. I receive that. I receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Uh, if you are a butterfly and you're walking in your rebirth, drop a butterfly before we get out of here. <laughs> uh, before we get out of here, just drop a quick butterfly. Drop a quick butterfly. I see you, Spirit Field. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I hope the audio wasn't too loud. I hope it wasn't too loud. I hope it wasn't too loud. I was scrambling. I was going to go live at six, but I don't like rushing. It gets my spirit anxious. I don't like that. And so I was like, okay, seven. Then I was worshiping. And so then I was trying to hurry up. Audio is perfect. Good. Thank you. Now, if in, you're in your season of being, 
if you crossed into 2024 and have decided that you're not trying to do anything, but you're just going to be all that God has created you to be. I want you to drop a B emoji. If you're in your being season, I'm in my being season. I'm, I'm going to the land flowing with milk and honey. I'm in my being season. <laughs> uh, I see you. I see you. I see you. All right. <laughs> the job is done. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to all of my mods, every single one of you. The ones who have been with me. Well, all of y'all have been with me. <laughs> We've been connected for a little while. So I thank you all for being everything that you are. I see you, Key. Um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I already reverted. <laughs> there will be reservations. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I see you, China. I see you, Les. I love you back. I love you. I love you. I love you. Are y'all ready? Also, I know I didn't release a podcast Thursday. I turned the mic on a couple times, and I did record an episode. But uh, I see you, Neeks. But um, mm, I don't know. I didn't really have much to say. And what I said, I was like, I, I don't know. So I didn't do it. Am I still doing merch? Yes and no at the same time. If you're looking for butterfly season apparel, no. But I actually am about to order some inventory and relaunch the clothing side of the things that I do. And so stay tuned for more of that information coming soon. I look forward to giving y'all some new fashions, new fashions, new fashions. Um, so yeah, let's get out of here. Now may the Lord bless and keep you in everything and all things that you do. May he make he, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance and give you peace. But I like this one. Let's go here. I feel like this is perfect. <laughs> now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the coming of the Lord Jesus. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. In this season, I am renewed. I know that's right. I know that's right. I know that's right. All right, I'm hanging up on you. I'm disconnecting from you. But it won't be long from now. I shall see you soon. I see you, Cameron. It's good to see you. Keep going in what God has called you to go into. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep shaking. I love you too, Chanel. All right. I'm hanging up on you in three two, one.